Hello and welcome to Tushka Training. Today we're in Machine version 2 from Native Instruments and we're looking at how to map a drum synth VST plugin. First thing we're going to do is we're going to load our drum synth up, uh, which is Microtonic, and we're going to initialize the preset. Now we're doing another tutorial on how to map a uh, drum sampler VST plugin. And they are different. If this was a sampler, we'd have all these slots that have individual sounds in, and we would map these slots to the single plugin. However, for a drum synth VST, we're actually going to mute all these slots completely, and we're going to map a single plugin to each individual slot in machine here. Each individual sound slot is going to have an extra plugin on it. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because it's a, a better way to work with drum synths. On a drum sampler, you tend to have just a couple of controls per slot. On a drum synth, you have all these controls, maybe even more. This is quite a basic drum synth. Um, and when you multiply that by the amount of slots that are available, in Microtonic, there's actually eight, uh, which isn't isn't that many. I've seen some with up to 64 slots. So you multiply it by the eight. If you look at all these pages we've got here of uh, of parameters, when you're actually going to change a sound on the hardware, the machine hardware, it's near impossible to actually do, especially with this automatic setup here, where everything on channel three is called channel three, and everything on channel four is called channel four. It's near impossible to use. You don't know what you're changing. The idea I'll do well to work is when you click on a slot, you would have just the parameters for that slot available. So that's what we're setting up today. Now, uh, Talking about uh, efficiency of, of working, which is what this is allowing us to do, work really efficiently on the hardware, you don't really have to worry about efficiency of CPU or RAM. Because they're not sample-based, it's not using much RAM, and drum synths don't tend to use that much CPU anyway, and because we're not using all the extra slots, it's only using a little bit of CPU, so don't worry about that. This is a good way of working that you'll get used to uh, very, very quickly. Um, so uh, we've already initialized the preset. We make sure the sequencer is not running. The next thing we need to do um, is to make sure that the very first slot on Microtonic is being triggered by a C3. Uh, because any note you put in to machine here like this, these are all C3 notes. Uh, however, on the different slots, there are actually different MIDI channels. So on sound 7, it's uh, MIDI channel 7 C3. Um, but what we can do uh, is... In our plugins, we, we change it to receive any channel there yeah, like this. It's the default setting on Microtonic, but there should be a, a setting on your drum plugin to make sure that it receives on any channel too. If the, if it can't be done, that's not a problem either because it can actually be set up in machine, but it's better if it can be set up in the plugin because once you set the plugin up, it takes a little bit of time to set up, but once you set it up, you save it as the default setting, and then every time you load that plugin up, it's ready to go. It will just work. Uh, I'm going to click stop on the sequencer just to make sure that it's stopped it doesn't really matter because we initialized the preset so there's no sequence of data anyway um, but it's better to be safe than sorry and now we've uh, we've uh, gonna right click on this pad here and edit MIDI CC keys click on the learn button and just press play now what that's done is it's changed this pad to a C3 as you can see there uh, if I just play it quickly there you can go you can hear that it's now triggering it um, it will be set up slightly different in every drum plugin, but each drum plugin that you use should allow you to set up these triggers to any key you want. And like I say, it needs to be a C3. So now we can move away from uh, the Microtonic interface for a moment. We're going to move to pages here, and we're just going to delete all these pages. Like I said, they're, they're a complete waste of time. Most of them you can't even see what they're doing anyway. Um, on simple plugins, uh, simple effects plugins and so on. This this can be a godsend, this automatic setup. But on plugins like this, you are going to need to set it up yourself. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new page. And we're going to call this uh, Oscillator. Now, if you've noticed here, I'm putting the Oscillator settings as my first page because I want this as my first page. I'm going to have Noise as my second page. Then I'm going to have this global stuff here as my third page because these are the things I want to get to first. Um, so uh, they're... they're they're going to be in my first page. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to hit learn over here. And I'm going to put them in the order that I want them. Uh, you can set them up however you want them. And bearing in mind, this is how it's going to be uh, visible to you on the screen of your machine hardware. So I'm going to go for oscillator shape, oscillator frequency, attack, decay, 
uh, pitch mod shape, pitch mod amount, and pitch mod rate. And then we're going to go in and rename these to shape, freak, attack, decay, uh, PM shape, PM amount, PM is for pitch mod and PM rate. And now if we close this uh, pages setup, as you can see my oscillator is now set up uh, with all the uh, settings. As you can see it's actually moving them, um, which is great. It's exactly what we wanted. Uh, and now we can actually go and set up our other pages. So the next page for me is going to be noise. And we're just going to hit learn again. And I'm going to put them in, in the order again that I want them. So I've got filter shape, uh, filter type, as it were, filter frequency, filter cutoff, envelope type, attack, and decay. So now I can go in and just uh, <clears throat> change this to uh, F type, F freak, F cutoff. E M V type attack and decay and again I can close this and you can see that the noise is now set up perfectly uh, it's my second page and my first page is still working fine so we'll open it up again and now we're going to put in our uh, global controls so uh, we'll call this global and I'm going to put them in the order that I want them which is my uh, oscillate and noise mix uh, as you notice there it's not actually going in that's because I forgot to press learn so uh, remember to press learn and then change your control so we've got mix um, EQ frequency EQ gain distortion choke oscillator velocity oscillator noise and oscillator mod now I don't know whether you noticed but uh, I missed out some of the controls and I'll explain why now First, stereo we can just leave on. We're using a single instance, uh, so it's going to use uh, both outputs. You may as well have it on stereo rather than mono because you can't have mono outputs in uh, machine anyway. So just click it on stereo and leave it as it is. Outputs, we're not going to use it. Again, we're using a, a single slot and a multi plugin, so we're not going to use multiple outputs. We're just going to use the one. We're not going to use level or pan. We'll use level and pan in our mixer in machine, so there's no point using it on the actual plugin itself. So let's start uh, renaming our uh, global settings, and that would be O mix N, uh, oscillator to mix noise, or actually uh, we'll, we'll call that, uh, I actually prefer that, we'll go with that. And then we're going to go with uh, EQ freak, EQ gain, Distort, and I think we had uh, choke next. Then we had uh, oscillator velocity, noise velocity, and modulation velocity. And as you can see, the uh, pages are now set up perfectly, and we're good to go. That's how you uh, map up a, uh, a channel of Microtonic, any drum plugin really, um, and actually get it set up perfectly. The next thing you want to do, uh, and basically this is the last thing you're going to do in your setup, is to uh, right-click on the Microtonic itself here, and then you're going to go to uh, Save as Default, and you're going to save it... Uh, Microtonic is, is a good enough name for that. And now every time you want to bring in a Microtonic onto a slot, you've now got a, a perfect setup to uh, do whatever you want. Um, and that's exactly how you set up a single channel of a multi-channel drum plugin to work in, uh, in machine. And as you can see, these will all actually all work perfectly. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial and we'll see you on the next one.